Hi guys, my name's Rick Shields down here at Quest Golf Studio based here at Lytham Golf Academy. And we've got a very tasty matchup between these two drivers. We've got the new TaylorMade M1 driver and I'm gonna pitch it up against the Cobra King LTD. This is the pro version because I can use the lower loft setting and the fade setting, which helps match it up to the M1 that I have got in fade setting anyway. So let's talk about the, the drivers first and then we're gonna get on GC2 hitting real golf balls. And at the end, we'll give you some data to see how much these two clubs have separated, if there is much separation, and which one could potentially suit your game and help you improve and help you become better golfers. So, TaylorMade M1 driver. I've got this in the 460 version, the biggest head setting. It ha there is a 430 version as well, but I'm opting to go with the 460 version. I've currently got it the weight setting, which best suits me. Weight all the way at the back. So that the back weight, in its most forgiving setting, really and the sliding weight at the front in the most fade setting. Again, it suits my strike, certainly when I strike towards the toe a little bit. I've got it in nine and a half degrees, because that's what suits me, in an Aldila Rogue x Flex shaft. Moving on to the Cobra, the King LTD Pro. I've actually got it in a, a loft setting that's slightly lower than the TaylorMade in eight and a half degrees, because it does suit me the best in that setting. And believe me, I've tried both of these drivers in both set, all settings that it can possibly do. And these are the ones that it suited me best with. What I like about this pro version as well is I can set it into a fade bias mode. The normal version doesn't allow you to do fade biased, it only lets you do draw biased. So the fact that I like the, the pro version because I can go lower lofted and set it into fade, which I found suited me best. I've also got this in an Aldila Rogue X Flex. It looks almost identical apart from the colouring of the one in the TaylorMade. There's a very subtle length difference. The TaylorMade's probably about maybe a quarter of an inch longer. Not much in it, but it is longer. So we've got a tiny bit longer in the shaft of the TaylorMade and one degree less loft in the Cobra because that's how the settings have worked best. Now, how these drivers have some similarities, they've both got a carbon top. Some have decided to display that carbon top in the TaylorMade, as we can see here. And with the Cobra, it's much more hidden. You can't tell it's carbon or carbon composite. Um, the idea of that is that they can shave weight off the top and stick it in the bottom. Both have done that. Um, very subtle, and I'm not sure, yeah, you can see it. It's a very subtle check pattern in the Cobra, but it, you have to look very closely under the correct light to see that. Um, black head with the King Cobra, black and white head with the TaylorMade. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Obviously got the space port, which is a big talking point. It's a weight that can bring the center of gravity down to the bottom and produce this centered CG. Um, whether that option is with the M1, if you adjust it enough, I'm pretty much sure it'll get very close anyway. Um, obviously got the window in there as well, so you can see the, the technology inside. Right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit 10 golf balls with each, so we're gonna get a fair comparison. But after five, I'm gonna swap over drivers so that not one of them has the first half of the hitting and one of them has the second half. After five, I'll swap over and say it again after five again. Um, I'm not gonna put you through it all. I'm gonna hit five with the uh, tail made, then move over to the Cobra, and then by the end of it, We'll have 10 shots with each to see what the results do. So, TaylorMade first, M1 driver. As I said, I've got it in the big version, the 460cc. I think it's a beautiful looking head with the black body and then the white kind of border along the face. I think it's a really good looking head. Let's give it a hit, see what it does. And then join me when I'm ready to hit the Cobra next. Okay, so that's five so far with the TaylorMade, and pretty good numbers. I'm not gonna show you too much just yet, but that was five good hits with the TaylorMade. Let's go on to the Cobra. So again, it's just trying to keep the testing as fair as we can, so I'm not gonna fatigue after all 10 shots. Okay, I'm gonna swap it on the computer, that's the only thing I'm gonna do. We'll go for an orange line with the Cobra. It's only right. Okay, so, Cobra time. We've got like I say, eight and a half, fade setting, nice big footprint, massive head, black finish, orange symbol on the top, does look the part. Feels, when I've swung it in the past, it feels lighter. I'm not sure if that's the case. Obviously the shaft length is a tiny bit less, but not enough of an amount to make me feel like I can, there's a huge difference in, uh, in weight, but it does feel lighter. Right, let's go five with this, then we'll swap over again so we can complete the 10. OK, 
Okay, so that's all five there with the Cobra. Uh, interesting results so far. Um, I just want to hit another five with each to concrete the actual evidence of that. Uh, join me a sec once I've got all 10 results and then we can really have a look through all the figures. Okay, so all 10 have been hit with both clubs. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Be interesting to see. Okay, so let's have a look at the, the shot shapes first. You can see those up on screen now. Uh, white ones are the M1s and orange is the King Cobra, uh, Cobra King. Um, the good news was the fade setting worked on both of them. <laughs> Something I've personally been working on is moving the ball to the right side of the, of the golf course. And for me, all of those have done the job. Now, that's more like the setting that I'm in and my shots. These clubs aren't making me hit the ball to the right. That's something I'm looking at. Um, you can see they're very similar across the board in height. Uh, side to side dispersion, again, that's more me than the actual golf club. So let's have a look at the, the figures now, because this is where it gets, gets very, very interesting. So if I, let's have a look at the averages first. Now, obviously, you can see all 10 shots there up on screen. I won't be able to show you all, but we're looking across this column here, this average column. This is the M1 averages, and this is the averages of the uh, King or the Cobra King Limited. Um, let's have a look at the nitty gritty things first. Should we have a look at carry distance? Average carry distance for the M1 was a fantastic 200, 292 yards of carry distance, giving me an average total distance of 319. Okay, that's good, very good numbers. Uh, the best one was the last one that I hit actually with the M1, which was 305 yards. So a very healthy hit of that last one. And the worst one was 280, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong. Maybe the ninth shot, 280 uh, yards. Okay, so let's have a look at that bit first. Cobra King. Average carry distance was 281. So that's a calculation of 11 yards difference. The M1 pipped it by 11 yards, not just pipped it, smashed it by 11 yards. Total distance was 13 yards less at 306. And that's a calculation of where the ball's landed at, at what descent angle and at what spin. Okay, so that's, that's still quite an important factor. Talking about spin, let's have a look at this spin rate. The M1 averaged under 2000 RPM for me. So 1975. Okay, that's, that's really good. My swing speed over 130 miles per hour. A spin rate that's lower than 2000 is pretty good. If you can launch it in low, low spin, it's out of there. And that was launching at 14.3 degrees in that nine and a half setting because I hit up on the ball. This is where the Cobra's, I think, lost its, lost its distance here uh, against the M1. The spin rate was 2,325. And the launch angle was, I mean, the launch angle was less, obviously the, lo the low loft was less, but if I put that launch and that loft up, that spin rate is going to go up a little bit as well. Something I didn't mention on the Cobra one, the best carry distance was 298, the best one. And when I got that right, it, it spun at 1700, which is absolutely perfect. So when you get it right, that Cobra one, yes, the numbers are awesome. But on average, and that's 10 shots, try to make it fair, swap over, swap over, swap over. Um, the worst one of the Cobras was a carry distance of 266. It's lost me a lot of yardage, that one. And that's the one that's spinning nearer to 2,500 RPM. So take as of those numbers as you wish. You know, they're all up on screen there, all displayed, all 10 of the shots for the M1 and then the Cobra. Um, but for me there, the M1 absolutely smashed it on distance. Its spin rate was much better. Its distance was a whole lot better. Its consistency was a lot better. Um, I've not looked into the right and left dispersion because that's ma mainly more me. Um, but that's pretty much smashed. And that's not even in the lowest spin setting for the M1. That's for me in its most forgiving setting. Guys, the proof is there. I'll always do these tests, doing it as the fairest comparison I can possibly do. Using the GC2, trying to swap it up. I'm going to be even upping the amount of golf balls that I'm hitting in the future. I'm going to be hitting 30, 40, 50 golf balls with each club. If you want to see that, comment down below. Let us know what you think about these two golf clubs. Do you want to test them? Do you want to try them? Have you tried them? Have you seen similar results or have you seen different results? I'd love to hear what you think. As always, subscribe. Thumb up the video if you've enjoyed it in this beautiful new setting. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Have a great day. And without question there, the M1 has been victorious by a mile. Guys, stay tuned. We'll see you all soon. And thanks very much for watching.